Welcome to the Gospel Doctor Podcast, a show that has been designed to help born-again believers realize who we are in Christ and to truly understand the power and the potential of the gospel that has been entrusted to us. My name is Prince John, and I'm the son of the king. Hey there! We are currently doing a series on When Plague Meets Divine Nature. Now, this is about what happened in history when plagues had interacted with men and women of God. In the first episode, we talked about a historical account of Jesus, which is partly mentioned in the Bible. It was about how Jesus healed Peter's mother, mother-in-law, Lucretia, who was in the last stages of the bubonic plague. Now, if you haven't had a chance to hear it, I listen to it. I strongly recommend that you do so. It's going to be a blessing. Now, that event happened in eighty twenty-eight. Fast forward to ninety not nine. There was another outbreak of a plague called the Black Water Fever. Many people have actually reported that they thought it was the bubonic plague, because bubonic plague was. Called Black Death, but this was Black Water Fever. This fever was a very, very serious version of malaria. I mean, I'm no, I'm no doctor, so this is how I can put it. So, a prominent teacher during this time in 1909, when this plague was at its peak in South Africa, a prominent teacher called John G. Lake. Many of you might know him, and he and his ministry team were predominantly in South Africa. So John G. Lake and a couple of other workers from the ministry went into the fields to make sure that they could help. Their role was to take the dead bodies and take them to places where they could be buried, and in some cases even burned. It was not their decision, but that's that was their role. Now these people would carry the bodies and work so hard, all day long, and at one point they had to strip down because the liquids from the dead bodies were dripping on them, and they had to strip down to make sure that their clothes were not being soiled without, to were being completely destroyed. The fact of the matter is that it was really gross. Okay, you can imagine that. Several people from other ministries were also helping, but these people from other ministries and even the doctors who were well trained, surprisingly or not surprisingly, were contracting the dis this disease and dying. People were dying everywhere during this time. During this great plague, they sent a government ship with supplies, and. Huge numbers of doctors. Now, one of the doctor he was closely watching Lake and his team, John G. Lake and his team, and how they were carrying the bodies. And he was very surprised and very curious about them, because they were not like the other doctors. They were not well protected, or as far as he could see, they were not wearing any anything which could prevent、um, the disease from happening. Now, one of the doctors that this doctor sent for John G. Lake and asked him, "What have you been using to protect yourself? Our team has this preventive、uh, measure that we took that we take, and we use all of these stuff for protection, and we make sure that we do this in time and perfectly so that we are protected from this disease. But in your case, you're different." Uh, you don't seem to use any of those. Do we? Do you have a secret?、Uh, and he also said that if a man could stay on the ground as much as you have and keep ministering to the sick and burying the dead, you must have a secret. What is it? So John G. Lake answered, "Brother, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. 
I believe that just as long as I keep my soul in contact with the living God so that His Spirit is flowing into my soul and body, that no germ will ever attach itself to me, for the Spirit of God will kill it. Now, needless to say, the doctor was surprised and he said, um, Don't you think that it would have been better if you used the preventive measures? But then John G. Lake replied, No, but doctor, I think you would like to experiment with me. If you will go over to one of those dead people and take the foam that comes out of their lungs after death, then put it under the microscope, you will see masses of living germs. The doctor did that, and he found a like, huge amount, huge amount of germs, living germs. And John Gillet continued, and he said, You will find that they are alive until a reasonable time after a man is dead. You can fill my hand with them, and I will keep it under the microscope. And instead of these germs remaining alive, they will die instantly. And the doctor was very curious. He tried it out. He took all these germs from the, a dead person's mouth. He checked if it was living. He found it was living. Then he placed it on Lake's hand, Dr. Lake's hand, and he found that the germs were dead. And he, he questioned, why? why? Why does that happen? Then John G. Lake replied, that is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. When a man's spirit and a man's body are filled with the blessed presence of God, it oozes out of the pores of your flesh and kills the germs. Amazing! Absolutely amazing! Now, what if during this time of the coronavirus, somebody says that they will not get sick? People would troll, make fun, keep them, keep them away from ministry. But think about this. The world says this. What, the, the world says what the virus is and how one can contract the virus and that you will get sick and that nobody is immune. And the Bible says that you will not get sick. And in Psalm 91, 91 verse 10, it says that no plague will come near our house. I don't know about you, but I choose to believe the Bible. John G. Lake writes something interesting after all of this. He says, Suppose, on the other hand, my soul had been under the law of death, or in the case of what he's trying to say, is an unbeliever. And I were in fear and darkness. The very opposite would have been the result. The result would have been that my body would have absorbed the germs, and there would have been guaranteed disease, and I would have died. Then John G. Lake continues, and he says, You who are sick, Put yourself in contact with God's law of life. Read his word with the view of enlightening your heart so that you will be able to look up with more confidence and believe him. Pray that the Son of God will come into your soul, take possession of your body, and his power will make you well. This is the exercise of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. My dear brother and sister in Christ, don't join the panic of this world. First of all, I love how he responded and how there was a natural sharing of the gospel there. The gospel is good news. The world is waiting to hear the good news from us. But all if all we speak is fear, if all we talk about is how great the virus is, Rather than how great the God, our, the God we serve, and our Father God is. If that is not what we're saying, what are we saying? Now, the Word of God says in Psalm 91, verse 10, No plague shall come near my dwelling. It will not come near your dwelling. Now, this is a time of reckoning. This is a time to... Choose sides. Where do you want to be? Joseph and Caleb were the only one who brought a good report when they went for spying. Which side are you at? 
This is not different from what Joseph and Caleb did. Either you trust in the promises of God or trust in the word of God and what the word of God talk, says about you, or you don't. 